Hey. Hey. Hey, in this video, I'm gonna teach you all about leaves. We're gonna be painting in a loose style of floral watercolor, so it's pretty basic, but also if you've never painted in this style before, it will take practice. Um, just make sure to be patient and stick to it because leaves can be deceivingly tricky at times. I'm gonna give you the brush technique you need. I'm gonna also show you how I mix up the wonderful smoky silver dollar eucalyptus color with watercolor. It's my favorite and I get asked a lot about how to mix up this particular color. So I'm gonna show you that. Um, and then at the end of this video, I'm also going to be showing you how to do a twisted leaf or a folded leaf, which can be a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna show you this really quick and simple technique that will just boggle your mind at how simple it is and it looks so cool. So make sure to stay with the video till the end and watch that. All the supplies are linked below in the description. So if you don't have these supplies or you wanna try them out or whatever it might be, make sure you click those links below and get going with them. I'm gonna get started. We're only gonna be covering four different leaf styles today. Um, and I'm gonna show you the techniques, the supplies I use and the techniques that I use in order to achieve the looks that I get with these leaves. Um, the main fork, forkus, <laughs> So the main focus with this video is we're going to be painting four different leaf types, which I'll cover very soon, And um, the, but the main focus of this video is to get you used to brush technique to use in order to achieve leaf strokes in a very simple way. So a lot of people do like the outline first and then color it in or just make it more complicated than it really needs to be. So I'm going to show you just one simple stroke that you can do to achieve multiple different styles of leaves, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so um, for all of these leaf types, the four different leaf types, we are going to, well, I'm going to be using my size six round brush, which of course, linked in the description below. Uh, no other brush is needed for what I'm about to show you, if you have this brush. I can't guarantee that the brush that you have, if it's different hair or whatever, will do the same, will give you the same results, but this brush and practice and getting used to the technique will. Um, again, like always, I paint with two water cups um, because I'm gonna be working with both warm and cool colors today. I like to keep them separated so that I don't get just brown murky water um, and then adding brown murky water to my colors, which is not so nice. Next, I have my palette and my paints by Windsor Newton Professional Level Watercolor. Again, all of the colors, etc., are linked below in my paper. All right, I'm just gonna get started with a couple basic techniques that are gonna translate over all four different types of leaves that I'm gonna be covering today so that we get that out of the way and then we can start focusing on the actual leaf. So with your round brush, you have, why I love round brushes, you have a two-in-one stroke in this brush. So if you look up closely to the actual hair on this brush, so if you look at the actual hair on this round brush, you have a nice wide belly on the brush, which if used on its side, like at a 35 degree angle with the brush, you can get a wide stroke. And then if you flip the brush so that the handle is pointing straight up and down or close to straight up and down, you can use the fine point of the round brush, giving you a really thin stroke. So it's kind of a two in one brush. You get to save money there. Um, but it also allows you to not have to change out brushes all the time. So that's why I'm only using one size brush for all of these leaves today. Um, and this happens to be my favorite size round brush. So if you had one brush to purchase and you didn't have budget for the other sizes or whatever it might be, my recommendation would be to go with the size six brush. Okay, so now that you kind of understand what you can achieve with a round brush in terms of strokes, width, and thinness, we're gonna actually put it to practice so you can get used to how the strokes work. So what I do um, for loose style watercolor, floral watercolor in particular for my stems, for the majority of my stems, I never really do S curves. So what I mean by S curves is if you literally paint an S. So 
if you look here, I'm going to paint an S on my paper. And it just doesn't look supernatural. It kind of looks like a worm. Um, and to me, it doesn't flow right when it's in wreaths especially, or frames, or a loose style of floral composition. I just particularly don't like the way S-curves look in stems, in loose florals. So you might see in the actual world out there, on like a flower bush or something, an S, a shape that kind of emulates an S-curve. And that's perfectly fine. There's also gonna be jagged and bumps, bumpy edges that make it look more natural, but a smooth S-curve in loose florals just doesn't feel right to me. So my go-to shape or curve for stems is a C curve. So if you wanna paint a C curve stem, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your brush up at about a 75 to 80 degree angle, rest your forearm on, the, on your paper, on your table, so you have a stable, steady hand, and then all you're gonna do is pivot from your elbow so that your wrist and forearm stays really steady, and you're only gonna arch that one time, okay? So we have our brush almost perfectly vertical, straight up and down. And I'm going to put little to no pressure on my brush so that I can create a really thin C-curve. So now I have a nice, cute, thin C-curve. So the really key, the really key, the really important part to this C-curve is making sure that you're not applying too much pressure on your brush when you're bringing it across in that C-curve or that arch. Um, a lot of people I've seen in my workshops that I've taught for years, a lot of beginners don't realize that they can just make one little tweak and it makes the world of a difference. Like for example, a lot of beginners um, won't notice that they're applying pressure on their brush, creating a fan effect on their brush so it makes the stroke or the stem wider, which also, in my opinion, makes it look like an eyebrow. So really focus on being as light as you possibly can when you bring this brush across the paper for your thin stem because that will literally make all of the difference, especially when the stem is in between florals and you're trying to make it feel dense and more natural looking. So try to keep it really, really light, like you're barely touching the paper as you come across and the stability comes from your forearm resting on the paper. So there's some quick tips for stems, by the way. So the colors I was using are Burnt Umber and just a touch of Mars Black. Uh, burnt Umber by itself is kind of like a milk chocolate color and I'm not a huge fan of that by itself. It's a great mixing color and I'm gonna show you how I mix it in with a leaf color later on in this video. Um, but for stems, I like to do a good chunk of burnt umber with some water so I can get a good amount of pigment. And then just a touch of Mars Black to make it a bit smokier and darker of a stem color. All right, so now that I have my main stem, what I'm gonna do here and here again is a huge tip that most people kind of skip over and just kind of just think that they're done and they don't need to pay attention to how the secondary stems are curving. Um, but the main tip here that I'm going to show you is, or one mistake a lot of beginners make is they just kind of plug in their secondary stems on their main stem and it kind of makes it look like a stick figure. Another big mistake that beginners will make is they will curve their secondary stems into or towards the main stem and it makes it look like a saguaro cactus. So we wanna make sure that we're curving out and we're following the main stem and then extending outwards instead of just, oh, I'm gonna plug a secondary stem here and here and here, and it looks like a stick figure. So here's the difference. We have on our main stem, this is what it should look like. We're just gonna follow the stem and curve out, overlap the main stem and then curve out instead of, so here it is again on this other side. And I like to stagger, so instead of going here on this side and then exactly parallel on the other side, it just feels a little too um, precise, or what's the word I'm looking for? Symmetrical. Looks a little too symmetrical if I have them like on the same exact spot, on mirrored, basically. So I'm gonna kind of stagger it all the way up the stem, 
But here's something that a lot of beginners I've noticed in my workshops will do is they will just, here's a stem, here's a stem. And you see how it looks very much like a stick figure. Uh, we wanna make sure to overlap the main stem and then pull out a secondary stem. Cause if you think about how things grow in nature, this stem is growing out of this main stem. It's not just plugged in anywhere onto it. And another thing that I've seen in workshops or in classes that I've taught is a lot of beginners will curve inwards with their stems and it just look, kind of looks like arms or like a cactus. So let's try to overlap the main stem and pull out, curving outwards like that, okay? All right, so now that we've got the stem part out of the way, we can make stems like tramps now, I'm sure. Uh, remember, S-curves, in my opinion, don't look super natural in a loose style floral watercolor. Stick to C-curves, so you're only arching one time. Pivot from your elbow and a steady forearm and wrist gliding across the table or the paper. Also, no eyebrows. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is more complicated. So I don't want you to get too frustrated with these leaves. A lot of people in classes I've taught, they get so excited that they're finally starting to uh, learn how to paint leaves, but then when they actually pick up their brush